Tuesday. And you know what that means? We got more any new slime Tensura old content. I know that he's going to upload, you know, cut content for season three content right now. I think he's kind of just focusing on Mushoku Tensei. So we'll cover those when it comes up. But remember, every Tuesday or so, we're going to cover this list of old Tensura, basically lore mechanics, how things work in this world. Let's begin. What? How skills work in that time I reincarnate as a slime? Skills power are system. by far the biggest determining factor of power in the world of Tensida. I mean, every ability, regardless of whether it's an art, magic, resistance, or attack move, seems to branch off from this single point of origin. Now, what do we know about skills since the last episode? I think we learned about magic last episode and how magic and skills are actually different. I think the best way to, the, the most simplest way to understand skills is that it's like a hotkey. You already know it. And you just kind of fucking press a button and then just skill uses is what I remember from Annie uses last video. It's as if the entire complex architecture that makes up Tensida's power system as a whole is completely built upon the foundations of this single concept known as skills. So if we're going to understand how and why Rimuru is as strong as he is, then we first need to understand because he's an isekai main character, but there's actually good underlying reason, right? Understand where it is he gets his power from. That way, the, the word of the world to Remuru's power will make a lot more sense to you. But first, Ad. this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Use the discount code and in use for your first you know, subscription sir, with Surfshark. Anyways, back to regular content. Let's get back to the video. Skills are at its core a power that stems from the soul. They're these seemingly the soul. natural abilities that are etched into the very core of a person or monster's existence. Kind of like a technique that's been engraved into who they are. Sassy Rimuru. What do we know about souls? I know that like uh, in order to kill something for real, we had to do like damage to the soul. I think that first time that was ever mentioned, or maybe the first time that I picked it up, was the battle against Hinata. Right? Hinata was doing like soul damage. That's the whole point of Dead End Rainbow. And therefore, if you do damage to the soul, it's like beyond just like destroying the outer body. Your entire existence is gone. And I think. Clayman's soul at the end of season two, we pretty much just destroyed it, right? What this means is that skills aren't something that require practice in order to be used. Instead, they can be kept whoa, whoa, what? these seemingly natural techniques wait, 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 that's wait. been engraved into who they are. What this means is that skills aren't something that require practice in order to be used. What? Instead, they can be cast instinctively as if they'd been part of the user they're The hotkey, the hotkey thing. The reason why this is, is because skills aren't abilities that can be acquired through trivial means like rigorous training. They're more so abilities that have to be earned. Powerful tech- That's so funny. Skills aren't trivial things that can be earned through rigorous training is one of the most like- contradicting statements but i know what he's saying because it's like you can't just swing a fucking sword and just spar to get these skills even though that's putting in a lot of fucking work but instead what is it you're just fucking chosen to get these skills and you just fucking know it it's like even before he said you don't have to practice to get these skills right it's like a greater more significant thing you you earn it by doing what it's like rigorous training they're <laughs> oh we got we got we got baldy in chat hey what's up joe we are currently doing any news reactions where I basically react to video essays on popular anime we're watching right now. I think that I, I think that Baldus anime is about to drop a, a diss track that we'll be reacting to. But hey, focus on this, okay? Focus on the skills, guys. More so abilities that have to be earned. Powerful techniques that serve as a kind of reward for evolving. Sorry, Joe. I'm I'm recording right now. <laughs> so no matter how much someone practice. Thank you, Tiger. Thank you, Tiger, for the gifted tier one sub. Guys! I'm trying to fucking focus on the content. Stop! Stop derailing me! I'll, I'll give you some attention after this, okay? ...reward for evolving or becoming more experienced. Okay. So, no matter how much someone practices like how they can do with magic, skills simply can't be learned that way. That said, there are multiple different ways in which they... Evolution, acknowledgement, stealing shit. You can just steal skills? That sounds fucking fun. Acknowledgement, what? So these are the five different ways of earning skills other than training, huh? Can be earned. And it's when they are earned that the person or monster gaining it also receives a significant permanent reduction towards their capacity for magic use. Whoa, 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 whoa. ways in which they can be earned. And it's when they are earned that the person or monster gaining it also receives a significant permanent reduction towards their capacity for magic cues. What? What? That sounds like a penalty. So like, you, you, gain, you gain a skill, but then you have like a finite amount of skills that you can learn. So your capacity for magic cues decreases. Isn't that a bad thing? 
Like, Rimuru, Veldora, they got so much magic tools, it, does, it shouldn't matter. But towards a normal person, if you learn a skill, you're essentially just, like, reducing your mana pool. Are you not? Isn't that, like, a pretty shitty thing? But maybe it is just, like, a little penalty, a little offset in learning a skill. And that reduced magic tool capacity is not actually that detrimental. And you can still fucking press a hotkey and use a skill, so it's not that bad. Interesting. It's almost as if in exchange for receiving this ability that adds to their soul, they have to give up a different part of themselves as compensation. The naming! When Rimuru was giving up... Uh, sorry, naming other, you know, monsters, he did get super tired because all his magicules got drained, but I didn't realize there was like a permanent disappearance of those magicules. I thought that, you know, it's just like it, it regenerates over time. You know, you use it all, like you use your mana, and then it just like slowly auto-recovers, but I guess... Not, but again, for Rimuru, it doesn't fucking matter because Veldora Magicule stuff, it's just too much, right? Of course, the benefit is the development of an ability that requires very little Magicules in order to be used. But it's because these skills even require Magicules in the first place that it's much more rare for a human to possess one than it is for a monster. Really? You see... Right, because humans don't really have Magicules in them. Monsters are basically manifestations of magicules or some shit from last video. The human's inability to store magicules within themselves makes obtaining skills a near impossible task to Interesting. accomplish. Even Have we seen a human use a significant skill so far? I haven't... Because, like, what have we been really fighting? We've been fighting other monsters. I can't remember a significant human other than Hinata that's ever used, like, a fucking ultimate skill or something. No, I don't think there has been. I'm sure, like, uh, what's that guy's name? The, uh, oh, oh, wait, Shizu. Well, Shizu was a summon. Is she a human? Technically, she's like a Majin or something. I'm getting fucking confused. But Yuki, the Grandmaster, I would assume that he has some kind of skills, right? I would assume so. With their souls being strong enough to store significantly more skills than the average monster, those skills won't ever wait, wait, wait. themselves makes obtaining skills a near impossible task to accomplish. Even with their souls being strong enough to store significantly more skills than the average monster. So interesting. Humans inherently don't have magicules like monsters. However, human souls are superior of that of a monster in how they store the the what is it? Store the they can the soul can store the skills. That's kind of counterintuitive, but okay. I wonder why the human souls are better in monster souls for earning skills, even though it's just so rare for humans to use skills when monsters will be using more skills. I don't. I don't fucking know. Those skills won't ever have the chance to develop if there doesn't exist any magical capacity to exchange for it. Yeah, I don't fucking know. That's what I'm talking about, Joe, right? It's like, yeah. Because, like, bro. <laughs> damn, I low-key need to watch some 10 survey to go. Your boy don't remember jack shit about this show. Because, <laughs> like, I do this for content and farming, but also it's, like, homework for me. Because, like, when I'm reacting, like, I gotta be fucking on point with this isekai show with a lot of mechanics. Or people will start shitting on me. So I'm, like, doing my due diligence. I'm basically studying this show right now. Skills won't ever have the chance to develop if there doesn't exist any magical capacity to exchange for it. Okay. That's why humans tend to focus on developing techniques known as arts over developing arts, form of skills, spirit stuff, when it comes to monsters, weapons, their innate Hinata. ability to have a capacity for magicules allows for skills to be acquired much more easily. They still have to be obtained via one of the five currently known methods, but they aren't held back by a lack of magicules like how humans are. Monster As superiority. Those five methods are, well, that's something that we'll cover right after we go through what type of skills there are. Oh, I love this part. Uh, cause so far. I thought unique skills were like the coolest thing. And then it's like, nah, nah, nah. Ultimate skill. And it's like, what? Ultimate skill? So I hope that there's something even beyond ultimate skill, right? Like, could you imagine godlike skill? I don't fucking that know. Way, when I start calling them by their classifications, you won't be confused as to what I'm referring to. What is that? So, as I said in my last video, skills are classified by their order of evolution. Okay. They go from common to extra to unique to Ah, extra skill. Yeah, I we hear extra skill all the time, but I never really understood, like, why is it just called extra skill? And then at a certain point, it turned to unique skills, right, right, right? Ultimate. Ultimate. While this does that's it? Is that, is that, that's the four tiers? In uh, descending order, sorry, ascending order, we have common, extra, unique, and the final tier of skills is called ultimate. And one thing is... Uh, I wonder if this matters it's only because the theme of angels are suddenly being introduced in Tensura, right? Whenever uh, uh, Luminous was talking about the flying insects, the angels. 
the ultimate skill that Rimuru was using was called Raphael and Bilzebub. And I know he has some other ones too. But Raphael and Bilzebub is very interesting to me because, you know, Raphael is the name of an angel. Bilzebub the name of a devil. This happens that during the ultimate evolution that we earn this angel title. I wonder if there's something deeper in lore in this world about why ultimate skills are kind of aligned with the name of these, you know, angels and devils. And no spoilers, no spoilers, but, you know, kind of get your brain thinking, right? While this does usually indicate how strong they are in terms of power, there are cases when a unique skill is in some ways more powerful than an ultimate skill. What? Unique can be powerful than an ultimate skill, but it's probably because the ultimate skills offers more utility, while the unique is just more brute force. That's why it's better to just think of these tiers as evolutionary indicators. Okay. Each one serves to do more than simply make the previous one more powerful. They also become much more complex and effective. Now, does this imply that every skill, starting from common, can eventually evolve into ultimate skill? That sounds pretty fucking busted. My assumption was only some skills can evolve into ultimate. But any new doesn't seem to be talking about any type of restriction, so it sounds like every skill can evolve to ultimate. One more powerful. They also become much more complex and effective. Starting with common. This is go. of course the most basic level. Shion. These are skills Back that in are the day. typically found to be shared amongst many races of monsters. Likely because they could have been born with it, or the skill itself was just that easy to acquire. Okay. Extra skills are ones that are said to have power and efficiency magnitudes higher than the common ones. To get an idea of just how much higher, let's use the extra skill Ultra Speed Regeneration as an example. Is that from this Guild? is a skill that when in its common form is simply known as self-regeneration, and it's one of the skills that slimes or vampires are born with. What it does is it basically restores any physical damage that the user has taken. So even if an armor like has been severed, self-regeneration will work to grow another one. Got it. When it comes to ultra speed regeneration, just this faster, acts far just more better. efficiently and effectively than how self regeneration does. You see, there's only so much continuous damage that self regeneration can keep up with, whereas ultra speed regeneration can heal pretty much everything. So now long what's as after the user's that? body isn't being destroyed at an atomic level, then ultra speed regeneration will continue to heal it back to its normal state. That's just how superior an extra skill is to its predecessor. Basically, just you know, evolve form just better is. Right, just better. Moving on to unique skills now. Here we go, unique. This is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. Great stage with unique. It's at this stage that the fundamentals start to change. What I mean is that skills of this tier and above are no longer attainable the same way a common or extra skill is. So so far, the the basic skills, the common, right, the monsters, they were either just born with it or just easier to just learn, right? But now there's a distinction at this unique and above. How Certain do you get that? conditions have to be met in order for a unique skill to come into existence. Okay. War conditions of the world? that center around a person's desire. If a desire. Person or monster doesn't possess strong enough feelings or even a sense of self strong enough to support it, then those are indicators that their soul simply isn't capable of acquiring it. Okay. So the desire thing kind of works out when uh, Rimuru or what was his fucking name in Japan? Whatever. When he got stabbed and he was thinking about all these different desires that he had, right? And then the word of the world was basically responding to each one of them and, and giving him these different passives or I guess skills to kind of help with those desires, right? They're conditions that rely on the part of the soul known as the ego. The ego. essence of an individual that establishes who they are, mainly through their memories and sense of self. While stuff like this is normally considered to be a social construct, the soul and ego are the what is this? what is this okay let's see so we got gopta as the example here the soul the root source of power will you have the material body which is this the external flesh that encompasses the soul the spiritual body is one layer here what is it the memory recording device that overlaps with the material body what the fuck does a memory recording device mean uh it's a spiritual body and then you have what's called the astral body the container for the soul, the operating device that does the thinking. This is pretty in-depth. I'm really impressed and surprised that the author went this far to flesh out these different layers of what makes up a living being. Soul, astral, and the material and spiritual just like overlaps. These actual known existences within the world of Tensida. So the stronger one's desire and sense of self is, 
the stronger their soul is in general, and the more likely it is for them to be able to acquire a unique skill. Basically, you just want to want it more, right? You, you just fucking just, oh, I just, I really want, I really want it. And then, then the more you fucking want it, the more likely you'll get it. It's like a sense of urgency, desperation, resolve. Those who don't possess those feelings will <laughs> never be Jesus. able to acquire one of their own. That's why unique skills are described to be the shape of the mind. Shape They're of a the person's mind. very will given form into reality. Now, one of the other fundamental- Huh! Shape of the mind, because it's your innate ego's desire that shapes that unique skill. That makes sense. Everyone's unique skill is obviously going to be unique to that person's natural traits and what they desire. That's why these pieces of shit, right? Their unique skills kind of match their characteristics. That kind of makes sense, yeah? Since very well given form into reality. Now, one of the other fundamental differences between unique skills and the two below it is that unique skills are often a combination of various different subskills. Predator, predation, analysis, stomach, mimicry, isolation. Oh, okay. Sometimes Sub -skills. These can be an amalgamation of already existing common and extra skills, but other so a bunch of sub skills make up this thing called predator that we knew. Even what's it called? The great sage is just the compilation of hasten saw parallel operation, all of creation, cast cancel, auto battle mode. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Common and extra skills, but other times they can be a mix of all completely new skills. That's what okay. makes unique skills well unique for a little bit more context because these are abilities that are shaped from one's personal desire the way it manifests into reality will be different for everyone essentially meaning that it can never be the same so mm. the instant a unique skill has been formed within someone's soul no other person or monster can ever naturally possess it at the same time uh, oh okay wait so it's like only one person can have that unique skill as they live. Now, Rimuru, if, if, if Rimuru were to die, and let's say a unique skill predator, could, so when Rimuru's alive, no one else can have predator. And if Rimuru is dead, then someone with enough desire could get predator. So it's, yeah, it's very unique to them while they're living. No other person can have the same thing. Well, it makes sense because it's called unique, right? It's an ability unique to the owner for the rest of their life. Last but certainly not least. What? What? This is going off tangent and probably don't even need to like point at it this much, but what if you have like a pair of twins or two, two people that has like such same desires and both, both individuals are desiring the same thing because their egos are almost identical. How would they earn these skills? Again, this example is such a random ex like an outlier that would never happen, but kind of interesting to kind of think about like, okay, I wonder what gets priority. The one that wants it more? Well, what if both want it at the same time? I don't fucking know. Ultimate skills follow pretty much all the same fundamentals that unique skills do. They're composed of numerous different subskills, okay. require an even stronger soul and sense of self in order to be formed, and can only belong to- So here's another thing, right? You know how I asked about how can every skill basically turn into an ultimate skill? Theoretically, yes. But that soul, which is the container of these skills, it needs to be strong enough in order for you to get that ultimate skill. And coincidentally, humans fucking have better soul containers than monsters for whatever reason. Did the fucking... The angels or... Because like, you know how in Skimichi Moon of Fantasy, the goddess really favors the humans? At least that's what it seems like. Therefore, I don't know, maybe it's like the same thing in this world where the fucking angels or some shit, they favor the humans more. Therefore, they gave them like a better soul container for these skills. But then one has to wonder why the fuck didn't they give them, you know, magical body just like the monsters. So probably just a coincidence, yeah? To be formed and can only belong to a single person at any given. Yo, you're right. 20,000 souls to farm for the... Well, 20,000 souls was for the transcendence into true demon lord but that's that begs another question can you basically harvest these souls and add it to your own therefore increasing the capacity for you to learn these skills does that kind of make sense so many questions i have now holy fuck i don't even know anymore soul and sense of self in order to be formed and can only belong to a single person at any given time 
What makes them different from unique skills though is mainly their level of power and effectiveness. Just better. I mean, they are the highest and final evolutionary form of them. So... Is it though? Cause like, I would like to know that there's like this one extra layer beyond ultimate skill. And not everyone has it, and only certain people have it, right? And it's like a hidden lore, but I mean, if Andy News is giving this video, did he read all of Tensura? What's to say that Tens Tensura Light Novel's not even fucking done yet? What if, you know, they haven't, they're about to announce like the newest fucking thing beyond that ultimate skill and Annie News didn't know all these years ago. I don't know, it's just my headcanon. It makes sense that something called an ultimate skill would give the owner a level of power in accordance with that. Usually something along the lines of controlling the very laws of nature or manipulating the principles of the world. You know, basic god stuff. Sure. But anyway. Now that you know the tiers in which skills are classified, the only other subsections you need to know about are intrinsic skills and resistances. Uh, what is it? What is it? Intrinsic skills and resistances. Intrinsic skills and resistances. Okay. These are skills that are typically specific to a certain race of monsters. Okay, before we get here, let's summarize what's happened so far because this is a lot of shit to unpack. So what do we learn about? We learned about how skills are basically formed from the ego, which is one's soul. You have to desire it to get that skill. You cannot simply practice. Monsters have better capacity for um, magicules, but they have lesser capacity for souls, which means gaining skills compared to a human. And then there's different skills, right? There's like common, extra, unique, ultimate. Common, extra, just easy to learn, I guess. A unique and ultimate, you need to have that ego and desire. And a bunch of subskill may form the unique. The difference between a unique and an ultimate is simply just the effectiveness and the strength, the magnitude of it. And so far, I think that's about it, right? And now we're going into intrinsic skills and resistances. Also, before we get there, right? In the beginning, Anyus did talk about the way you earn skills, right? Which is, there's like five different ways. I forget, there's like evolution, naming, stealing, blah, 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 that he'll talk about later. But right now, we're on intrinsic skills and resistances. Monster most often given to them upon their birth as a small set of low-tier common or extra skills. So, for a slime like Rimuru, the intrinsic skills for him and all the other slimes in the world would be absorb, dissolve, and self-regeneration. Just... Okay, these are like, um... Yeah, what you're saying exactly. Racial skills, right? Different races, different groups of monsters, they're all gonna share this common, uh, common skill. For example, slimes have all this. Resistances, on the other hand, are pretty much defensive variants to these. Most of the time, they're given upon birth in accordance with the race of a wait, monster, wait, 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 wait. defensive variant of and self-regeneration. Resistances, on the other hand, are pretty much defensive variants to these. Okay, intrinsic skills and resistances are basically just racial skills. Intrinsic is just happens to be things that's more about your specific race. For example, if you're a slam, you're going to do the regen, whatever stuff. And then resistance is just racial resistance. So, like... I... I, I I was gonna say, like, we would have resistance against holy, but actually that's not it. We have, like, a racial like, debuff against, like, the holy magic. Most of the time they're given upon birth in accordance with the race of a monster. Which is why they're usually- It's not even a race of a monster, that's just like a generic monster versus human, that's like a species thing. Most of the time they're given upon birth in accordance with the race of a monster. Which is why they're usually considered to be part of the intrinsic skills. But there are times where resistances can be acquired post-birth as well either through a stage of evolution or by simply exposing yourself to a negative status or effect while in the presence of a high concentration of magicules. So this is how this motherfucker was just like earning a resistance towards everything because like anytime he's exposed to something he develops resistance for it. Even Gopta. What happened after he ate Shion's cooking in season 1? He fucking survived and he learned poison resistance. That's like an intrinsic... That's, an, that's, that's like a resistance, right? That is, that is. The end result is the passive ability to withstand certain physical or magical phenomena. Alright, now let's talk about how exact these skills are required. Okay. I know they may not seem very rare considering how easily Rimuru goes about obtaining them, but... Th I thought it's just about the ego and desire, right? It's not simply practicing, you must desire and want him more than anyone else, and basically... Will the war of the world... I don't know, does the war of the world exist to everybody? It should! I think everyone was hearing it, right? There was the whole announcement going on when we were doing the true Demon Lord Ascendancy, remember? 
that was not Great Sage talking that everyone thought it might have been because the War of the World and the Great Sage and now Raphael have the same, the same voice actor. So everybody must hear this shit. And when their ego, when their desire towards something has been some kind of threshold, ding, the announcer comes in, you get this skill. They're actually much harder to come across than you'd expect. I mean, not everyone has been blessed with the very OP combination of Great Sage and Predator. So, to be able to True. possess even a single unique skill already places you well above the strength of the average soldier. That's why other worlders are treated as Boo. such valuable assets. The unique skills they possess upon their reincarnation is a highly coveted ability. Does everybody get a unique skill after reincarnation? Because, well, these are other world of summoned. They got summoned, right? Rimuru, when he was dying, he had all these different desires be voiced out, which turned into different skills. These guys never died, so they would never have that kind of desire. Unless they got summoned, and then their desires to go back home, and they, they, I don't fucking know, man. ...are treated as such valuable assets. The unique skills they possess upon their reincarnation is a highly coveted ability. Anyway, the first- The other world does just get one? They don't, they, they just get summoned here and they just automatically just get one based on their personality. They didn't have to like desire anything. First method in which skills are gained is through birth or evolution. Okay, birth or evolution is one of the first types of gaining these skills. This typically doesn't apply Bald? to humans, but monsters as we know are a type of species that can be born with certain skills unique to their race. Evolution on the other hand refers to something a bit more vague. There's naming, no right? So far, the evolution I know is just like naming someone and they just happen to like evolve into something different beings. But naming in the process drains up all these different magic cues. So are you giving them your magic cues? I never really questioned that. No distinct method that describes how a person or monster can evolve, but it's when they do that they usually receive new skills in the process. This can either be an already existing one evolving into something stronger, or a completely brand new skill independent of all the others. Okay. If we use an orc as an example, the unique skill Starved is one that's only granted to it after one has finally evolved into an Orc Lord. Only then will this ravenous skill be made accessible to the Orc who completed their evolution. Basically, just like a prerequisite, you need to get this evolved form to get this unique skill, got it? The next method of gaining skills is through the acknowledgement of the world itself. Okay, so far we have Birth and Evolution. And now we have Acknowledgement from the world itself. As in, I think this is the desire thing about how the word of the world will listen to your desires and then accommodate you with these skills to count to basically get everything that you wanted. Whenever the system that governs the world has deemed someone worthy of receiving a skill, the voice of the world will be heard as it announces what they've earned. Okay, so this is interesting. I've been saying the word of the world. It's actually the voice of the world. My bad. Has it been going back and forth? I thought that this is called the word of the world. But it's the voice of the world honestly sounds better. Word of the world, it's hard to say and it sounds kind of weird. But interesting how Annie said, you need to be acknowledged by the system of the world. And then it almost sounds like the voice of the world is simply a messenger. And it's not the system itself that made that decision. I thought that the voice of the world was like this omnipotent being in this world that just kind of gives you all this different shit for whatever reason. But now it's sounding like there's two separate entities, the overall system and a voice, an announcer, exactly. That's my assumption based off of this. Who knows what the real deal is, but that's what I'm listening here. Whenever the system that governs the world has the system worthy of receiving a skill, the voice of the world will the be announcer. heard as it announces what they've earned. It's an event that's usually defined by the accomplishment of a spectacular feat or the successful implementation of a skill without actually possessing it. The feats are most often occasions in which a person undergoes significant personal growth. So, in the context I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much anything that helps to fuel one's own desires and feelings, essentially strengthening their soul so it becomes more suitable to carry skills within it. As for using a skill without possessing it, well, an example would be the time in the cave when Rimuru manipulated water in Wind a way blade, that like a projectile. Because he was able to figure out how to properly use this ability on his own, the voice of the world declared that he'd gained the skill Waterblade in recognition of that. What? Because like that was like the difference of what magic is versus skill is, right? In the previous video, Rimuru basically learned how to do Waterblade by kind of like conceptualizing what was going on. I think so there was some kind of fucking engine and decided, okay, this is Waterblade and spat it out. But then it's like the, the voice of the world's like, she, you're pretty good at this. 
skill learned. Here it is. Now he can just press a hotkey to just use Water Blade. So this is like earning it. It's been acknowledged by the voice of the world. That's the essence of how this acknowledgement process okay. works. Almost sounds like first you need to manifest that magic by yourself. Then the system will acknowledge you. Then bestow you upon that skill so you don't have to really use magic again. The third method of acquisition is actually the one that we see most often. What and is it? It's the process of stealing skills Steal! from Steal! Most of the examples we've seen in the anime are mainly from unique skills that specialize in extracting other skills from a specified target. Now, I think someone mentioned in chat too, and I remember back in season two, uh, that piece of shit, that Sogo guy and the girl, the gaslighting girl and the, the barbarian, the berserker, Sogo, he killed her and then he gained the skill and I was like, what? How the, how the fuck did that happen? But I think it's implied now that he basically stole her skill, right? But we've also seen Rosin steal skills by possessing the bodies of their owner. Oh, Rosin too. It's a more robust method that involves gaining access to the target's soul. Ah, uh, oh. A target's soul? I thought that the soul was like destroyed. And Rosin basically hosted... Rosin, sorry, Rosin hosted... Basically, Sogo was hosting Rosin's soul. That, that, that was my understanding of this scene. I thought that Rosin basically did boink and his soul was killed and then he implanted his own soul into Sogo's body. But what Ananus is saying sounds like, nah, nah, I don't know. Who's making a mistake here? Rosin made the mistake or Ananus is making a mistake? I'm going to assume that Ananus is correct about this. It's a more robust method that involves gaining access to the target's soul. Okay. Once the process to do so is complete, he's able to take any skills they possess as his own. Basically, implant your fucking sense, your consciousness, your soul into someone else's body, and then you take all their existing skills. Now, the fourth method of gaining skills is the process of sharing. Sharing skills. A very skills. situational method in which we've... So, any news's mistake was there? If I go to the comment section, are people going to build a timestamp? And multiple people can be like, Actually, Razem did not kill... So goes okay, I get it. Okay, okay. Annie News made a little mistake, and we basically kind of just like went and just took over uh, Sogo's skill. So what is it then? So Sogo's soul remains. I'm confused. I mean, should we go watch that again? Basically, you can steal skills by possessing someone else's body. Is the highest, easiest way of understanding whether or not Razen kill Sogo's soul and implant his soul in there. Okay, the Sogo's soul was destroyed and Razen put his, skill, his soul in there, but I thought the skills are attached to Sogo's soul, but it's actually attached to the body and not the soul, which contradicts everything that we've learned in this video, but perhaps skills are not bound by the soul but sometimes also harbored in the, 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 whatever, uh, whatever, fuck it. I've only really seen Rimuru use. Thanks to the sub skills of the unique skill gluttony. Okay. Rimuru can use any of the skills his followers possess or hand down duplicates of any of the skills he possesses. So hold up. This is sharing skills. And what's Rimuru doing? Rimuru use. Thanks to the sub skills of the unique skill gluttony. Rimuru can use any of the skills his followers possess or hand down. Hmm. Rimuru can use any of the skills his followers possess or hand down. Even like um, the, the Black Lightning, right? The, was it Black Flame? Like, what was Gopta doing? Remember Gopta's like scabbard? There's like a little Black Lightning that shoots out in the earlier season one. And I was like, whoa, Gopta can do that. But Rimuru also showed that he can basically use like that kind of thing before too. So that's kind of sharing skills there, right? Or even like, uh, what's it called? Shadow travel? The, the act of getting into, you know, people's uh, uh, shadows, right? Everyone can start doing that. So that's another shared skill, right? Down duplicates of any of the skills he possesses. Essentially giving full reign over which skills he and his subordinates have control over. Then the last method for skills to be gained is through the evolution of them specifically. Okay. So now it's about... We're talking about gaining skills. But no, 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 this is basically how a skill would then evolve from like, let's say, uh, what is it, gluttony or gluttony or some shit to predator, basically a uh, uh, word of the world or vision, voice of the world to, sorry, 
uh, great sage to uh, Raphael, evolution. What I mean is that certain situations can result in skills combining together in order to make completely new ones. Okay. Like, Remuru's unique skill to generate is one of the easiest ways in which this is possible. But not everyone can be like him and freely experiment with combinations of skills and see what they become. For them, the ability to combine and evolve skills is something that's not as easily available. Skill issue. But anyway, now that you know what skills are and how they come to be, okay. you should be starting to figure out why it is that Rimuru is so much more powerful than everyone else. Because he's the Isekai main character? Well, besides that, right? Why is he more powerful than everyone else? Well, I think that when he died, and he was saying so many desires that he wants to do, the voice of the world heard him, and it did make him into a slime, but the slime body is extremely efficient and really, really fucking OP. On top of that, he then, like, he then, like, I'm not, did, he didn't, did he make a contract with Veldora? Veldora and Rimura did the finger touch, and basically Veldora became inside him, and then we did all that shit. And then on top of that, we have the voice of the world, and... Uh, gluttony and something and, and the combination of those two just makes him get these skills so much better so it's just it's just fucking ridiculous i think the biggest contributors to why rimuru is so op is the great sage in the beginning and predator right these two are just fucking ridiculous and predator is one of the funniest shit because predator is like he gained this because of his desire to not wanting to be a virgin again when he's reincarnated right he said in his next life damn i'm gonna be more aggro towards girls i'm gonna be more assertive so that i don't die a virgin and then it's like unique skill predator and it's like shit and that turned out to be one of the most significant fucking skills pretty much the fundamental the foundation of rimuru right yes the unique skills he started out with were definitely helpful but the main source of where all that comes from is his soul. His soul. The capacity to increase. Why would his soul be the greatest, though? His peculiar existence as an otherworlder has made him what he is today. Remember, otherworlders are usually these beings that possess a single unique skill upon their reincarnation. Yeah, okay, so it is kind of confirmed. So upon reincarnation, Oiler. Well, they didn't get reincarnated. They got summoned here. But even if you're summoned or reincarnated, you're always going to get at least one unique skill, is my assumption. This is because their souls are made stronger due to the reconstruction of it that happens as they cross from the physical world to the cardinal world. That's why they're capable of supporting a power that no other normal human can. I don't know what the fuck a cardinal world is, but basically we're traversing through the different worlds and reincarnating or summoning. Now, when we get to Remuru... His soul wasn't reconstructed the same way all the other Otherworlders were. Huh? Instead, his soul remained fully intact throughout the entire process. So, just like you guys are also saying, soul of a human, body of a monster. And what do we say in the beginning? That humans actually have a better capacity to learn skills because they got a better soul. Monsters are just better at, you know, magic because they have our magic tools. Now we have pretty much the combination of best of both worlds, and that's why Rimuru's potential is so much fucking cracked than everyone else, is what I'm understanding here. It was a unique occurrence that not even Veldora knew was possible. So, this means that Rimuru's soul was already extremely powerful right from the get-go. Okay. Not only did it allow him to possess two unique skills upon his reincarnation, that's right, Great it Sage, also Predator. seems as if he has capacity for infinitely more. Once again, showing just how limitless his potential for growth actually is. But, yeah. That's pretty much everything you need to okay. know about skills. Hopefully you were able- Now, let's do a little summary of what we learned today, right? Basically, what are skills? And skills are basically, um, they're basically hotkeys, right? You press a fucking hotkey and you can just fucking use a, a water blade, right? But before a skill becomes a skill, it is sometimes it's magic. But before we even get to there, a skill is bound to a soul. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes, like, Shogo is berserk can be bound to the body, but essentially, the soul is the mitochondria of the, <laughs> the, cell, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Now, it's where all the skills can derive from is your ego, the desires. There's many different, you know, forms of skills, right? You have different tier lists of skills from common, unique, ex sorry, common, extra, unique, ultimate, right? And on top of that, apparently, if you give, you, if you get gain a skill, your capacity for magic cool shrinks, which is kind of concerning. But I guess not that important at the end of the day. Beyond that, we learned about how humans have souls that are better 
for learning skills, but monsters have better magic cools or just has more magic cools, therefore they're better for magic. But Rimuru has the best of both worlds on how he was reincarnated. And then we learned about basically like the five different ways of how skills are inherited or just like gained. I think there was like, uh, I'm gonna have to go back. I can't fucking, there was like evolution, right? We know about evolution, naming, sharing, stealing, acknowledgement, stuff like that, right? And then finally, yeah, why Rimuru has like the ultimate potential. Not just because he's a random Isaka character, but because he has the soul of a human in the body of a monster. Best of both worlds. And there's no fucking way anime only is are going to be able to understand this shit. Like, this anime is so in-depth already. Like, the amount that they're adapting each season, it's so in-depth. But on top of that, it's still not enough. I guarantee you no single person will be able to even, like, understand what the fuck this even is just by watching the anime. And then the craziest thing on top of that is exactly, Annie News probably didn't even scratch the surface because this is a 14-minute summary on the fucking light novel details. Like, this probably could be like a six-hour fucking thesis, and it's still not enough. And that's the beautiful thing about sweaty fucking isekai, right? Sometimes people shit on about isekai so trashy and generic and boring, but sometimes uh, weaponized autism and ADHD can create this wonderful work, so in-depth, so fleshed out, that a 14-minute video is simply not enough. But hey, I'm trying my job, trying to do my due diligence and understand what the fuck is going on in slime. And don't worry, every week I'll come at you with more of these videos. And yes, there is also more cut content each week than Andy News will make that I will react to, just like Mushoku Tensei. That's it from me. Bye-bye.